Boogeyman versus Boogeyman. Uh, great performance from David Benavidez. And we're going to be taking a look at, I don't want to say what made it look so easy, but what allowed him to put himself in so many advantageous positions. Okay. Now, first off, David the Mew is a very explosive fighter. He's He punches hard. He always punches fast. Um, and he's not great at going slow. Okay, so he's immediately trying to put a pace on David Benavidez. Uh, and this gave him a lot of control over the fight. It gave him the appearance that he was winning the round in the beginning of the first round. Uh, for the first two minutes, coming forward and really pushing David Benavidez back and kind of finding these punches here as David Benavidez exits the line here. A very common pattern here, again, as David the Mew comes forward and puts himself with his head toward his back foot to really charge up that right hand. Now, David Benavidez seeing that move coming, seeing that move coming, and Lemieux giving him look at it over and over and over again, all the way to this one here, where he sits on the front foot and tries to start also adding the left hook there. Uh, but again, David Benavidez getting more and more looks at it and trying to stay a little bit closer, right? Starting to see... Um, exactly what it is that David the is going to do after he throws his jab, get comfortable seeing it. And after it comes here, David Benavidez doesn't leave the line. Okay, He sits his weight on the front foot. Notice instead of peeling away, he waits for the right hand here. And now he's countering with the left hook. Uh, even though he doesn't get his weight to the back foot, even though he doesn't do a lot of the things correctly, David Lemieux is doing some of the work for him as his weight is going to go from that back foot position cross the line here and now it's going to go into the front foot and now he's going to be bringing it back to the back foot with his left hand uh, so he's getting intercepted by david benavidez extremely well okay this is a very 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 great adjustment from david benavidez uh really catching him paying really close attention to the very common patterns of david lemieux and catching him and making him pay for it now this is the 54 second mark and the next mark that we got is david Ben, David the Mew's not going to throw another punch to the 38 second mark. Okay, and what happens? He throws the right hand, gets into the front foot position, has no defensive responsibility. Very similarly to the one where he just got caught with the left hook, except that David Benavides is also going to follow it up with an uppercut. Okay, so not only has he been sitting in front of that shot, double penduluming off away from the right hand, and then he starts sitting there, getting close, getting used to what you're going to do, reading your move, trying to block it from the back foot all the way up until he's waiting on the front foot for that shot, and now he times it so he can counter you with the left hook, and now he's adding the uppercut to that move as well. Again, showing a progression in his thinking and the chain of, of sequences, understanding that, that when he's going to start intercepting David Lemieux in and what part of the sequence, and how to continue adding to those sequences uh, constructively. And I'll say pretty safely, he knew that uh, David Lemieux wasn't going to do anything but eat that punch, uh, just like last time. Uh, and this time, following it up and catching him with a great shot. Um, again, a lot of impressive stuff in this fight. And now again, David Lemieux telegraphing what he's going to do. He throws his weight to the front foot. And once he gets there, Benavidez timing him and actually throwing a really good hook this time. He didn't wait for David Lemieux. He didn't try to be super explosive. He, he got into the position, and then he immediately started transferring his weight. And notice, front foot here. And now he's going to bring that left shoulder all the way back and really transfer his weight toward the back foot. Uh, and this is where he hurts David Lemieux in the first round. Really catches him with a really good shot. Um, and again, uh, David Lemieux making a couple of no-nos. Okay, Making it to the line here from the back foot, crossing the line. Is this supposed to be his feint, this right hand? The one that he's that, that uh, Benavidez is, is countering? So anyway... Just making a lot of mistakes, not fainting, not probing, not controlling, not getting Benavidez out of this position that he's chosen to defend the line in. Because David Benavidez is already waiting for him. And now he's got control of this position. And as soon as he gets into a position in which he can attack, uh, he explodes. And again, hurting him here. Still not dropping him. Um, but getting the fight pretty close to everyone thinking that it's going to be over. Uh, the referee said he almost stopped it. Uh, now... Beginning of the second round, David Lemieux coming out, stepping in with this big right hand. Uh, Benavidez is getting a little bit of control of it, getting off the line. And Lemieux is going to make an adjustment and try to roll to the back foot here. Um, however, he still winds up walking into a punch and another punch and then getting dropped here. Okay, So even though he makes an adjustment, um, David Benavidez showing that he's expecting enough of these sequences 
to be in these specific way, or he's seen them in these specific ways, to already have adjustments. So David Lemieux transfers his weight to the front foot here with the right hand. Now he's gonna sh he's gonna roll his weight back to the back foot here. Um, now, one of the very common problems, like 90s fighters and 2000s fighters, and um, I think you can even see it in David Lemieux's training videos with Russ Abner. Uh, I'm guessing, okay? I used to watch those when I was a kid. Um, uh, but uh, it's very common to teach your fighter to have the, the ball of the back foot always be, or have the heel of the back foot always up and always have the weight on the ball of the back foot. Uh, no matter where your head is. It doesn't even matter where they teach you to put your head. They always teach that footwork pattern. And because of this, David Lemieux is going to be shifting his weight more toward the front foot on average. And that means that after he makes a defensive move here, front foot, back foot, it's automatically going to be throwing him toward a center place in his line where he has the ability to easily transfer his weight toward the front foot and be on the ball of the back foot. Okay, so he's going to be looking for the easiest place that that is, and that's kind of how we learn to be in our boxing, quote unquote, stance. Okay, that's what everyone thinks you want to be in position to throw the right hand. So David Lemieux forcing his weight toward the front foot. Uh, maybe he's intending to shift, maybe not. Um, but most of the time, fighters don't actually have the opportunity to to choose as they don't actually transfer their weight to that back heel. And unfortunately, we can't really see um, how much of his foot's on the ground because of the thing there, but it doesn't look like his heel gets to the ground. Um, but David Benavides is ready anyway, okay? Penduluming off the line and finding himself in position to counter him with that left hook, uh, that left uppercut there. Beautiful, beautiful shot from him. Um, now, even though he's making an adjustment, throwing that shot, David Benavides is ready. Again, no fainting, no probing. Uh, David Lemieux doesn't have an opportunity to make Benavides think anything else other than the right hand is coming, and he's already decided how he wants to be countering. Now, when he's on the front foot, he's he was countering with the left hook, uh, with the left hook. This time, he's going to pull back to the back foot and come back into the line with the uppercut instead of going with the left hook. Uh, I think he could have done both, but um, catching him with the the uppercut instead. Again, w with this pull back to the back foot, he could have landed the left hook as well. Um, but again, David Benavidez not protecting his punch, but trying to use the head movement here, the roll. Okay, so maybe that's why he's not going for the left hook initially. Um, but the idea is that he's still getting caught here, even though he's making an adjustment. Uh, and Benavidez is able to make adjustments with him. Now, as we approach the final sequence here, again, David, ben David Lemieux coming forward, hard punch. He's not setting it up. He's not fainting. He's not probing. Okay. Now he's going to leave that position, right? A little bit. Maybe that's a roll. Maybe it's not. I'm not sure. Um, it looked like he was vulnerable there to me. But he's going to throw a left hook here. He's going to throw a right hand, and now he's going to throw, try to throw another left hand as well. Um, and again, getting caught after in that position one after throwing that right hand uh, in a very similar position in, in Benavides. Again, following the move up, not content with just the one punch that he was landing before. Boom! But following it up. Not throwing an underhanded punch, an uppercut, but throwing an overhanded punch, a right hand over the top this time. Again, uh, showing that he's prepared to make each sequence more and more beneficial to him. He's going to get more value. Uh, and uh, yeah, great adjustments from Benavidez. Um, uh, again, David Lemieux tried to make adjustments and was still not able to get away from uh, the counters from David Benavides again, mostly because of the fact that he throws so many hard punches. Um, he doesn't actually look to control his opponent, and when he faints, they're not really faints like he's looking at his opponent. They're faints like he's just hoping that they're going to open up enough space, right? It's just kind of like a default thing for him to do, um, whereas a better fighter, someone like Lomachenko, is getting to see you react with your rhythm and your weight and your uh, position, um, and as you move into a position, he's looking to attack you. Uh, whereas, as we saw with David Lemieux, a lot of times coming forward, uh, not either not fainting at all with the shot like this, or not even paying attention to it, right? It doesn't even matter. He just knows he's going to throw the body shot um, or throw the head shot, uh, but not even finding himself in a position in which to land it um, and not really uh, making his attacks in relation to his opponent. Um, so kind of like, uh, I'll say, 
David Lemieux kind of the epitome of like a C-level fighter. Uh, in spite of the fact that he can move his head a little bit, uh, doesn't really faint, doesn't really probe all that much, um, and doesn't look to set things up. Uh, in spite of the fact that you don't really want to sit on the line with David Lemieux because he's got a lot of power. Um, anyway, we'll be doing a, um, a full fight film study on Patreon. Uh, if you guys are interested, it's 10 bucks to sign up, 10 bucks a month. Um, and there's like a thousand videos on there. Um, there's all kinds of videos. All my early coaching is on there, uh, teaching fighters weight transitions and how to get from position one to position two, the best ways to do that. There's some shadow boxing drills, uh, some really, really cool stuff. Um, and all the ways that you can kind of, uh, start kind of from the ground up your, in your training. I had a lot of, a lot of beginners in the beginning. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a cool experience. So check it out again. There's like a thousand videos. Um, and I'm always posting new content almost every day to Patreon. Uh, there's no copyright there, so I post entire videos. Um, they've tried to do the copyright stuff on Patreon. They've contacted Patreon, but Patreon uh, says that, well, these people are paying for it. So obviously it's his own whatever because you can get that shit for free anywhere. So anyway, uh, Patreon is a copyright-free zone. Uh, so we watch entire fights, do entire film studies. We talk about, you know, everything. A lot of times I'm just ranting and whatever, but it's cool. Um, anyway, if you guys got any questions, um, yeah, leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.